So there's a lot of buzz that happened yesterday about the Pixel Foldable. Now there's things have changed. The, the, the goalposts have moved and there's a lot of stuff that's changed over the last year. This has been a hot topic that's circulated around for a while. It pops up, dies back down. We'll see if it happens. I think it is going to happen. I, it's one of those things kind of like the Pixel Watch. Hopefully it doesn't take like four or five years to come to fruition. But when it comes to the Pixel Foldable, there are a couple of things that were leaked out by prominent leaker person John Prosser. And... We'll take this for what it's worth. Grain of salt. This, I like to have these topics of conversation anyway. Uh, it's interesting to me. Of course, I like the foldable phones. I've been using foldable phones since the very first generation. I have my Fold 4 right here, which I use all the time, every single day. And I've talked about it quite a bit. I've had the Fold 1, 2, 3, 4. I have the Surface Duo 1 and 2. I've even got the Huawei Mate uh, XS2. So, yeah, I've got a lot invested in this stuff. So, looking at the Pixel Foldable. And apparently it's falling under the name Project Passport, uh, which hopefully it works out better for them than it did for the BlackBerry Passport, which actually was a pretty amazing and unique device that got a lot of flack that actually for people who used it, most of them liked it a lot. So maybe the same thing will happen with this. There's a couple things I want to dissect here. Now you've seen the image, and this is a reported, like a redone rendering to protect the people who I guess leaked the information out. I'm not a big fan of all the leak stuff because... It takes away a lot of the surprises, but it's the cat is out of the leak and rumor bag, so I talk about Pixel stuff, so let's talk about it. It looks a lot like the Pixel 7 platform. From what you can see, it's going to have a camera bar on the back. Of course, when it's closed, when it opens up, it's actually supposed to be a little bit larger than the Fold 4 device. So that's interesting, especially because the reported price is about $1,800. I don't think that's going to stick. Here's why I don't think that's going to stick. Because when you take a look at what the Google Pixel has done over the last two years, it's about bringing prices down. It's not about raising prices, which, of course, you're going to have to raise a price with a foldable, right? It's not like you're going to be able to make a Pixel foldable for like $999 instead of $899. This just doesn't work. However, I don't think $1,800 is going to work because people look at the Google Pixel phones for value pricing now. Heck, the Pixel 7 is fixed to go on sale on the 17th of November for a week, for Black Friday week, for $499. It started off MSRP $599. When you look at the Pixel 7 Pro, $899. It's getting a $150 reduction barely a month after it's come out. So I don't think that anybody is going to buy a Pixel foldable at $1,800. And to make sure that doesn't happen, I can almost guarantee that Samsung is going to find a way to give more deals and incentives and try and lower the price more on their foldable because they're leading from the front. They're controlling the ship. If you haven't paid attention to the US, there's not a whole lot of foldable options other than the flip phone. The Razer, the new Razer 2022 didn't even come available over here yet. So this is pretty much it as far as the US folding market. And if you look around the world, the Pixel 6 and 7 phones made it to about what, 9, 13 different markets, something like that. So this is not even going to be something that's gonna go globally. You think Google's gonna sell a foldable Pixel phone at $1,800 globally all over? No, it's not going to happen. It's probably going to go to very limited markets. So I think it's an interesting idea, but they're going to have to get it down to probably about the $1,399 price point for anyone to take it seriously. I'm sure they'll offer some good trade-ins. I'm sure they'll offer some good incentives. But no, I don't think Google commands that type of a price point, regardless of whether it is a ultra-luxurious foldable phone. Foldable phones are cool, they're exciting, but you saw that Samsung worked very actively to try and lower the price quickly from starting off at the $2,000, now we're down to $1,799. I had hoped for a price reduction with the Fold 4. I think $1,599 is probably the sweet spot for it now. I hope that the Fold 5 will come in around that price point. I think $1,599 makes more sense. We're talking about the fifth generation of technology for Samsung. This is first generation for Google. And also something else that's worrisome, when you take a look at what Google does with their first generation technology, it's not always on the mark. Talking about the Tensor 1, when we got with the Google Pixel 6 and all the issues they had with Android 13, by and by, I think it's a pretty good product, but some people did have some issues. Same thing with the Pixel Watch. I think it's a very good watch, but I think it missed the mark in a couple areas. Maybe the generation 2 will bring everything that we want. So I think that there might be... I don't want to say there's concern because the product's not even here yet, right? I, I can't judge it before it shows up and I can test it out. But historically speaking, looking at what Google's done with their device lineup and what they're trying to bring to the market in this whole comprehensive ecosphere they're doing, 
I don't really see an $1,800 phone. Doesn't make sense to me. It, it just it just doesn't. So if they can get it about $1,399, maybe even $1,499. But again, we're talking about a lot of money here. We're talking about a lot of stinking money. Like, who wants to go spend that much money on a phone? I mean, I don't. I do it because I'm a tech addict and I make videos about these phones. I very much like my Z Fold 4. But what is compelling out there? What would it bring to the table that would seriously make somebody take a second look at it and go with the Pixel Fold over a Z Fold 4? So I think probably it's not going to be on a huge, massive scale. I don't think we're going to see millions and millions of them. But it would be really nice to have a second player into the market here in the U.S., if you take a look around the market, you've got Honor, you've got Huawei, you've got Xiaomi, you've got Samsung outside the United States. Inside the United States, you basically have Samsung. You have Microsoft with the Surface Duo 2, but it's got a hinge design. It's not a it's not a true foldable. It's a folding display, not a foldable display because it has a hinge instead of a crease or it doesn't fold in on itself as one seamless screen. So I'm interested in it. I would like to have one. I hope that it does happen. But I hope that Google does it in a very smart and intelligent and market-educated way that gives the customers what they're asking for instead of making them shoot for the moon just to create a product that might not necessarily have a good fit for their lineup. I think it is important and essential to have competition in the foldable space. I absolutely think that. But it's been coming down over the last few years. I think it would be a bad decision to go with that route. But if we get the legendary Pixel camera setup that goes along with it, presumably a Tensor, probably a G3 in there, then, yeah, that could be some really cool stuff, especially if you know, the rumors on the G3 are true and it's based on, I think, like a 3 nanometer process technology. It could do some serious damage in the hardware department and make for a nice, hopefully thinner, and a little bit larger in the screen department when it comes to a foldable phone. So... We have to take all this stuff with a grain of salt. This is all leaks. It's all rumors. It's all calculated speculation at this point. So don't sit back there and go, you know what? I'm going to put all my marbles in and wait and see if this happens sometime in 2023. I hope it does. But we've been talking about a Pixel foldable for basically like the last two years already. And it's still not here. And it supposedly got scrapped this last year and then brought back online. And then there's some more changes. So we'll see what happens here. I hope it happens. I hope it's done intelligently. I hope they make some good value-based decisions like they've done with the Pixel 6 and 7 lineup because that's where they're winning hearts and minds. That's, that's how they're going to capture market share. That's how they're going to make relevant products that people actually want to buy other than just trying to play competition with Samsung. They're not. Samsung sells like hundreds of millions of phones a year. Google sells a few million a year. So they're not even in the same arena, but on an order of magnitude on that scale, what Google has been able to do in their corner of the market with their hardware and their software experience is really starting to turn some heads. And I would like to see that momentum continue because it's best for the consumer market to have choice and options and competition. So that's all I've got. What do you think? Are you excited about the prospect of a foldable Pixel phone? Do you think it would be interesting? Would you be willing to pay one? Would you be willing to pay over $1,000 for a Pixel experience with a foldable screen? I don't know. Sign off in the comment section. We'll talk about it. And if you enjoyed the video, please hit the like and the subscribe button and the little notification bell if you want updates when new videos come out. And as always, thanks for being here. I appreciate you watching and I'll see you guys next time.